In our last video, we talked about the notion of flexible budgeting, with the main idea being that we can take our initial budget that we use for planning purposes, and then we can turn it into a flexible budget that is basically adjusted. It's our regular, it's our original budget, but it's been adjusted uh, for the change in activity, right? So if we expected 100 customers when we put together our original budget, and then with the flexible budget, well, we say, oh, well, we actually had 150 customers. Well, the differences in costs and so forth might be driven by the fact that we have 50 more customers than we expected when we put together our original budget. And so therefore, we've adjusted for that. We've kind of controlled for that with the flexible budget and updated our original budget totals. However, when we take that flexible budget, we notice that when we see, okay, we look at the difference with the actual numbers, right? So the flexible budget is still planned numbers. It's just, just been updated to reflect the actual activity level, but the numbers are still budgeted expectations. But when we look at the actual numbers, we can still see differences between the flexible budget and between the actual results for our company. So we talked about a movie theater and the idea of popcorn expense, right? So when we say, okay, well, we've, we've adjusted our budget, now we've got this flexible budget, and based on the flexible budget, based on 150 customers or what have you, that activity level, we should have expected an expense of 700. But then we say, well, wait, our actual expense was 850, so that leads us to say, well, we've got a variance here. We define this notion of a variance basically just being a difference, and we'll say it's 150, and it's unfavorable, right? That means we basically spent $150 more on popcorn than we budgeted, even after controlling for the fact that, that our activity level was higher. And so now we know that we've got this red flag here and say, hey, we've, we've got this variance. Maybe a manager should look into this, but we still don't understand, well, is this because of the price is that we spent too much money on on the popcorn or is it because of the quantity does it have to do with that we use too much popcorn are we putting too much popcorn into each bucket what why is it what, what's driving this unfavorable variance and and we really didn't get into that with flexible budgeting and so this is where the notion of, of standard costing and variance analysis comes in because now we can actually go and say well let's let's take Let's say that there's a standard amount, standard amount of popcorn that we think is, is acceptable to put into each bucket. And then we say that there's a standard price that we're willing to pay, a standard price that we think is a good price for popcorn. And so we could take these standards and then compare them to the actual amounts, and then that'll give us an idea where we can parse out and say, oh, wait a minute. This, this, this variance that we're having is due to us spending too much on popcorn or wait, maybe no, maybe it's this, that we're, spe we're just using too much popcorn, maybe we're wasting some, or maybe it's a combination of the two. So let's jump in, into an example, and I think it'll be a little easier to understand. So let's, let's stick with the idea that you own a movie theater, and you determine that the standard amount of popcorn, so I'll just circle this amount, we're talking about the standard, so the standard amount of popcorn is that you think one quarter of a pound, a quarter pound of, of popcorn should go into each bucket. And let's, let's just say one size fits all. You've got one size. You don't have a large, a, a huge size. So you, you just have one, one bucket of popcorn. And so for that one size of popcorn, there should be a quarter pound of popcorn in each bucket. Now, I have no idea if that is way too much popcorn or not or too little, but let's just go with it. Now, when you think about the standard price of the popcorn, you basically say, okay, well, we purchased popcorn from our supplier, and we think that based on historical trends and so forth, $1.50 a pound is basically where we think we should be paying. That's what we think we should be paying for our popcorn. Now, again, I have no idea how realistic that is, but these are the standard totals that you come up with, right? So now you've got an amount and you also have a standard price. Now that we've got these standards, we have something we can benchmark the actual amounts, right? So when we get this actual amount, we have something to compare it against, and we can figure out if it's price or quantity issues that, that are driving our problems. So now we need to know, obviously we have the standard amounts here, but we need to know the actual results, right? If we don't have the actual results, we're not gonna have anything to compare to our standards. And so we say, okay, well, the actual, at the end of the month, we found that we spent $2,200 to buy 800 pounds of popcorn. 
Now we used all 800 pounds. There's, there's nothing left over. We used all 800 pounds, and ultimately we were able to make 3,300 buckets of popcorn with that. And now we've got the actual results and we've got the standards. So now we have something that, that we can compare. And there's this really neat way that people have kind of come up with for comparing these. And so you might want to make a notation. This is a very common way of looking at it. Uh, we've got our actual quantity. So this AQ is actual quantity. And then we've got our actual price. That's, that's, I think that's very easy to understand. So we think our actual quantity and our actual price. Now, now let's go and let's just, I'll, I'll just write that out before we get into explaining all this. So we've got 800 pounds. And then we're going to multiply that by $2.75. Okay, now you might be wondering, where does this two seventy five come from? So let's, let's calculate that. So we've got... 800 pounds of popcorn that we bought, right? But we bought it for $2,200, okay? So we take that $2,200, this is the total, right? And we want to get per pound. So we take the 2,200 and divide it by the 800 pounds, and that's going to give us 275. So I'll just, let me change colors here. So this is just going to be that 2,200 oh, divided by 800. That gives us that that. 275 up that's per pound so now let, let me let me change up colors here again so now when we think of the actual results it's going to be twenty two hundred dollars is the actual quantity times the actual price of the popcorn and now let me get a little squiggly line separate this so you understand that these are these are different now we're going to go with the actual quantity times the standard price. So the actual quantity is going to be the same, right? It's still going to be 800 pounds, 800 pounds. But now we're multiplying it by the standard price. I'm going to explain why in a moment, so just hang with me. So our standard price is going to be $1.50, $1.50, and that's per pound. And you might be saying, well, why $1.50? Well, remember, that's the standard that we came up with. When we looked and said, well, what do we think we should be paying for popcorn? We said $1.50 a pound. So the actual amount of 800 times $1.50, that's going to be this middle column. And that's going to give us 1200 And maybe I should I should change it again. I'll just, I'll just make them all blue in this bottom row. So that's 1200 Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's take a let's take a little little step down here for a moment. Let's let's take a look at these two totals and, and see what we've come up with, right? I don't want to I want you to have some of the intuition here. So, when we it's convention common convention to draw a little bar like this, and what we've what we've got is we've got a difference here between 2200 and 1200, right? We've got a difference of $1000, right? So that's $1000. And what that is called is called the price variance. This is our price variance. And you say, well, why the price variance? What are we talking about here? Well, that's what we changed, right? We, we kept quantity constant. In each column, we were, we, were combined, we were multiplying by the actual quantity. What did we change? We changed the price, the actual price versus the standard price. So this variance here is really telling us the difference between the actual price and the standard price of what we paid. And if we look, we say, okay, well, is this thousand, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, we think, okay, well, what's the standard price? It's a dollar fifty, and the actual price is two seventy five. So that means we paid a dollar twenty five more per pound for this than what we what we had expected to do under our standards. So that's going to be an unfavorable. That's a U there for unfavorable. That's an unfavorable variance, right? So we have an unfavorable price variance. Now, we said that that was the first part, right? We were trying to figure out with the popcorn, when we've got the spending variance, is it due to the price? Is it due to we to use too much popcorn? So now we have to get into the quantity, right? So we have to deal with that, and we got to we have to compute this, this final column to do that. And so in this final column, now we're going to have the standard quantity and the standard price, right? So... The standard quantity is going to be 825 pounds. 
And I'll tell you how I calculated that in a moment. 825 pounds, and then the standard price, well, we've already, we already know that. Right, is that it's that dollar fifty. We already talked about that. That was just that was just given. Okay, so that dollar fifty. Just copy that over. And now that's going to equal. That equals one thousand two hundred and thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so where did this eight hundred twenty-five come from? You might be saying. So what we did. We want to know the standard quantity, right? So we used 3,300 buckets of popcorn. That's the actual amount of popcorn we used. What's the standard amount of popcorn we use per bucket? Well, we decided it's one quarter pound, 0 0.25 pounds per bucket. So we take the actual amount of buckets and multiply it by the standard amount of popcorn that's supposed to go in each bucket right there. So we just take, and, and let me... Let me change colors here again. So this 825, we get just by taking 3,300, and we multiply that by 0.25, okay? That is going to give us that 825 pounds. That's our standard quantity. By our standards, for as many buckets of popcorn as we made, this is how many pounds of popcorn it should have taken to do that, right? So now we can go similarly... Just like just like over here, we computed that price variance. Now we can go, and we can. Here I'll just. Oh, let me change up colors. So now we can go and just drag this over here. Uh, maybe that's a little too far. We'll drag it there. Oh, that's a terrible line. Okay, let's see if I can do. It. That's a little better. So now we're going to have our quantity variance. Quant. You know, let me put that in a. Let me put that in a different color to make it stand out. Quantity variance. And that is going to be $37.50. And and that's just the difference. We just take the, that twelve thirty-seven fifty and we subtract that twelve hundred. That difference, that's our variance, right? That's our difference in the quantity. And is it going to be favorable or unfavorable? Well, actually, so if we take a look at this 825, by our standards, that's how many pounds of popcorn we should have used given how many buckets of popcorn we had. So now, it, actually, we only use 800 pounds of popcorn to make that many buckets. So that's actually a favorable variance. Now, that, that might seem a little weird because you, you might think, well, so again, please don't get too hung up on this favorable thing because... That might actually be, a, people might be complaining, say, hey, you didn't put enough popcorn in my bucket. So just because it was a little bit cheaper for us because we used fewer pounds of popcorn doesn't necessarily mean it's something we should be celebrating. But in any event, now we can go and we can take these and we can actually come up, we can come up with a total variance. So between these two now, we can say we have a total variance. Total, oh, shoot, let me, let me Keep getting stuck with white. Okay, total variance is going to be, and now we just we just take the difference of these two amounts, and that's going to be nine hundred and sixty-two dollars, nine hundred and sixty-two dollars and fifty cents, and that's going to be unfavorable because this we got this thousand unfavorable, but it's offset a little bit by this favorable. So now we see. Okay, let's take a step back. We've got. A $962.50 unfavorable balance. Now, upper management, they're going by and they say, hey, look, look at this popcorn. We really have an, a big unfavorable variance there. We should look into that more. Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, it's actually our price, our price that's driving it, right? So now you're getting a little bit of a deeper analysis, right? We said before, are, are we spending too much? Is that, is that? Is that the problem when we have that spending variance? Are we spending too much or are we using too much? You should probably, for consistency sake, spending too much or using too much? Well, it looks like we're, we're spending too much. We're paying too much for our popcorn. Now, maybe the price of popcorn has, has gone up and it's not, it's not a problem or something like that. But whatever the case, this is kind of a red flag. Uh, to our top management that, hey, we need to look into this. Now, you might say, well, what does it matter whether we're spending too much or using too much? Why do we care 
and, and want to break it out in this way where we have a price variance and a quantity uh, variance? Well, the reason is that a lot of firms, especially larger firms, will have two different managers that will be in charge of, of these, right? So what you'll have is the prices, you'll have someone who's called the purchasing manager. That's their response, that, that's his or her responsibility, this purchasing manager. It's their responsibility to, to uh, be accountable for this variance and to answer and say, hey, yeah, I actually had a lot of problems this, this quarter or there's, there's some, some kind of issue with the popcorn market. Uh, it's their job to answer for that, right? And then the quantity, when we think about the quantity, now we think, and again, with like a larger firm, we think of somebody like a production manager is going to have more influence and control over how much uh, material we use to make our products, right? Now, something like a movie theater might be the same manager, just a general manager is responsible for both. But larger firms will, ha will actually have it where these, these are two different responsibilities. And so we, w we want to really be able to, to break this out and say, okay, we know we have this big variance here, but how does it break out, right? We've got this price and we've got this quantity aspect. And so we really want to know who dropped the ball or if it was a really good month or quarter, who's the one that should be should get a bonus and so forth. So we really need to be able to know uh, what, what is driving uh, this total variance right here.